All right, we've got a 99 Ford Econoline RV. The customer states that the house battery is not charging when the engine is running and the starting battery is charging. So we're gonna first verify that and see what we get. We can see that the battery is at 12.38 volts. Now this is the starting or engine battery. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and let's see what that changes to. All right, we can see we're at 14.28, 14.3 volts. So we know that the engine or the starting battery is charging up. Let's go back and check the house battery and see if that's getting the same voltage. Okay, so I'm at the back of the RV. Here's the house battery. And you can see all the way to the back here. I don't have a lot of room because we've got a trailer right here. So I'm gonna do this in a handheld shot. So I apologize for the shakiness. The test lead here. And if we look at 14.07, now I'm in voltage loss mode. So this is how much I'm losing to my house battery. Let's put this in voltage available mode. We only have 0.09 volts available at the house battery. So not only is it not charging, because we can see our starting battery, the engine's still running, is at 14.16 uh, volts because of the alternator. But my house battery has absolutely no voltage whatsoever. So not only is it not charging, but this house battery is totally dead. Let's check the ground to the house battery. Okay, so I'm gonna connect that clamp. I don't know how well you can see that, but let's look at the ground. Okay, so the ground we can see is good. 0.02 volts is on my ground side to get a green LED, but the positive side we get that red LED and we have a 0.09 volts. We definitely have no connection between the engine battery or the starting battery and the house battery. Plus the house battery, at the very least, needs to be charged and tested. Back underneath the engine on the driver's side, there is this solenoid right here. This is the solenoid that connects the starting battery to the house battery. We can see here, it looks like we've got two trigger wires that go to this terminal right here and then we've got one of the battery cables that comes in on this side and then the other battery cable comes down here i'm not sure which one is which but we're going to find out very quickly and then there's not a fourth terminal so that means that this solenoid uses its ground through the bolts here into the frame into the vehicle so it's always grounded it gets the trigger wire for the ignition switch, and then that closes these two terminals. So we're gonna see what's going on right here and just test that. I hope you can kind of see this. I apologize because we're right in the direct sun, so I know it's very difficult to see with the bright sunlight. It is extremely hot too. So we're at 14 volts for our starting battery. Let's take a look over here. We're on voltage available to see where we get our 14. So there's 14 volts on that terminal right there and 0.25 volts on this terminal right here. So very clearly already, we know that the, these two are not being bridged right here. This is, goes back to my house battery, or to my starting battery, and we see how close that is to the battery. I can look at voltage loss, and we see we have no voltage loss. This is clearly the starting battery. And now this right here, we're losing 12.71 volts. We only have one, now we have 1.3 volts. Interesting that that's gone up. So what I think is that there's something going on with the solenoid. Now we need to make sure that the solenoid is getting its trigger wire. That's coming from right here. So I'm gonna test there. And look at, we've got 13.92 volts available. We get our green LED, only losing 0.03 volts on the trigger wire. So I know that my trigger wire is good. Let's check the ground to this guy. Let me see if I can get in here, get to the back on the frame. Uh, hopefully you can see that in the camera. We get a green LED for our ground and 0.02 volts. So my ground is good. This solenoid needs a ground. We verified that that's good. And it needs a trigger wire. We verified that's good. We can look at them at the same time. So the trigger wire, the positive, and the ground for the solenoid are both present and they're both good. This needs a solenoid. Very simple, very easy to see. And we can even see the difference. We can look at the two terminals at the same time if we want. 
they should be identical since we're in voltage available mode. And look at that difference, 13.9 volts on one side and three volts on the other side. It needs a new solenoid. All right, you know, one more thing that I wanna check, I wanna make sure that when we key the car off that the signal goes away that the trigger wire goes away and that this does turn off. So yeah, there's a little bit of corrosion on that bolt. It's not making the best. Let me just make sure too, these are tight. Everything is tight there. Okay, so we get our green LED 13.8 volts. I'm gonna turn the ignition off. Let's see what happens to that trigger wire. See, we get a red LED for the positive and it goes to zero volts available. So the trigger wire does turn off. Let's see what positions it's on in. Let's go to accessory. It is not on an accessory. And then let's go to, yep, the run position and it's on and run. And now I wanna see if it's on and crank. Okay, so in the crank position, that trigger wire is not present. So it is only on in the run position. We spoke with the customer, let him know that this solenoid is bad. And he said that he has actually replaced the solenoid already once before, and not that long ago. Of course, we know with customers, who knows what that actually means. The issue here is that this solenoid is not meant for continuous duty. These solenoids get extremely hot and they require a lot of current to operate. They're really more meant for short-term, momentary, typically no more than a 50% on time or 50% duty cycle. So when you're driving, especially for a long trip, the key is in the run position. This solenoid is on and activated. It, it's gonna wear out, it's gonna burn out. So you need a solenoid that is meant for 100% duty cycle. There are a lot online, you can see like on Amazon that supposedly are kind of this style, the solenoid style that are rated at 100% duty cycle. They're really not. I've never found a good one that can last for a long time. They all get really hot and they will all fail. So you need to go to a different style. And one of the great ones that I recommend is this Blue Sea Systems latching solenoid. It's meant for continuous duty. This particular one is the 7601. On the back of it, it's pretty much the same terminals that we have here. We are gonna to have to make a couple of changes, but we've got our two big terminals here. On this one, it does not matter which one goes to the starting battery and which one is house battery. It can go either way. Now down here on the bottom, we have a ground. That's the one difference because we don't have a ground here on this solenoid because it's case grounded. So we're gonna to have to add a ground, easy enough to do. And then these uh, trigger wires here, because these are based off of the ignition switch only in the run, this SI, we actually want this to go to the start. So we need the cranking switch, uh, the cranking signal to go to this terminal. So we're not gonna end up using these. I'm gonna take these out. I'm gonna look for an ignition circuit that's off the crank position, and that is gonna go right to there. I've got the new isolator installed. It still needs to be mounted. The way that this isolator works, it's different than the other one. The other one is manual, and I'm not gonna get a lot into it in this video, but it's manual. It basically is a solenoid that when it gets a positive and a negative, it closes that solenoid. This is a smart isolator. What it does is it will combine or disconnect the batteries based upon their voltages. And it, it's a dual sense, which is really cool because that means that if one battery is charging and the other isn't, it'll combine them. It doesn't matter which one, or if one goes under voltage, it'll open it up, it doesn't matter. There are three blinks, there's three quick flashes. And that, if you look on here, there's a little trouble codes. It says triple flash under voltage isolation. If you remember back, the house battery was at like zero volts, so it's in a lockout state. The only way to clear it is to correct the condition. So we are gonna have to charge that house battery and then test it to make sure it's still good. Obviously also checking to see if there's any drain on it with these motorhomes or RVs. There are typically always some drain. So we need to make sure that that's looking good. But once we correct that condition, we get the voltage on the house battery up. This will automatically combine. Again, there's a lot to these. I'm not gonna go into it too much, but 
This is not capable of supporting greater than, I believe it's like 115 amps for a short period of time, 65 amps continuous. So this is not meant to combine the batteries during an emergency jump start. We don't wanna be pulling from the house battery if the starting battery is dead. There's another method on this vehicle, that's why we went with this one. If you needed something that could combine the batteries when cranking, we would go with a different Blue Sea Systems controller. So for this one, it is only meant to combine the batteries when we're under 65 amps. So the trigger wire here is the ignition switch in the crank position. When it receives that, it will open it up and that's our start isolation. So I know there's a lot to that. Again, this video isn't really meant to explain these and how they function. Blue Sea Systems can do that themselves. It's their product, but this is mostly just kind of testing that old solenoid recognizing why it's bad and then replacing it with something that's going to work a lot better and is meant for continuous duty. All right, I've got the new solenoid mounted. We're connected to our starting battery over here. We've got our 22 foot leads coming all the way back to the house battery. I'm going to get the house battery fully charged. So let's take a look with Devo. Our starting battery is connected to the left side of Devo and that's at 12.87 volts, 12.88. So we know that that's good. And then if you look at the top right value, that is our house battery. And that's exactly the same. We're in our voltage available mode. So we can see that those numbers match up. They're the same, which means that the solenoid is connected and on. I'm gonna hit the mode button so we can see our loss. And there is no voltage loss between the house battery and the starting battery. We also see a green LED for the circuit positive for the house battery, so we know that that's good. And then the bottom right value is our ground to the house battery, and we see we have no voltage we're losing across the ground side. Also have a green LED there, so everything looks really good right now. Right, now before I start it, I wanna show you that the status light, we get that solid green light that's on, and it tells you right there, solid on means that it's combined. So we know that, we obviously saw that because Devo was showing us that the house battery and starting battery voltages were the same. So we know that that's combined. Now we're gonna go ahead and start it up and see what it does. We got the engine running and the solenoid, the LED will change on here, the status light. It will open up when you're cranking it so that way it only pulls from the starting battery and not the house battery. And then after, uh, I don't know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, something like that, it will recombine them. So it's done that. Let's go back here and take a look at Devo. Still connected to the house battery back here. And we see our starting battery is charging at 14.31 volts. And the house battery, we only have a 0.02 volt loss. So it's almost identical. If you wanna see that voltage available, we can see that it's 14.28 volts available at the house battery. And then the ground side obviously is good, only a 0.02 volt loss. We get green LEDs all the way around. So this new solenoid is working. It's doing exactly what it should be doing. This customer should not have any more issues after this.